So. Okay. So Matt, am I, um, Matt Sheehan, am I ready to go? All right. Wow. You know, I feel like my head is going to explode because this has been a powerful day. So first I have to start with thanking the panelists, the moderators, all the participants for their questions for what has been a really um, exciting, stimulating, thought-provoking day. So thank you. And I also have to, to give a shout out to uh, Joanne Andreas and Robin Solar, our CDC partners, and thank them because they have been so supportive and planning to get us here today. So I'm going to try to just quickly sum up a few things, and it's, it's hard because there's a lot here. I mean, certainly what we've heard, you know, and we knew this instinctively, I think, is that, you know, issues related to trust, mistrust, and even you could argue disinformation, misinformation, have existed for centuries. And our, what, what our historian tells us is it goes back to the 1700s and some of the first reactions and the anti-vax re, um, uh, responses to the smallpox vaccine. But today's qualitatively different in a couple of key ways. And one is that we've seen a societal sort of acceptance of this idea of alternative facts. And we have seen, you know, the ability of, of populations using social media, others to shop for the expert who reinforces their worldview. And so that has led us in part to the challenges we face. The other thing that is different and qualitatively different in an important way is public health officials around the country have been threatened and have um, been basically often sort of run out of their positions. And that's different from what we've seen in the past. But we also know that trust waxes and it wanes and it changes over time and it differs by communities and populations. So we spend a lot of time talking about how do diverse communities experience um, pepper science? How do they interact with public health agencies? And we know that, you know, part of what happens is that for many marginalized or many racial and ethnic minority communities, they live with daily emergencies. It may be gun violence in their community. It may be, you know, the inability to stay home when sick during a pandemic because they have no leave. It is racism. It is problems with access to care and all those social determinants of health. That creates like an ongoing constant emergency. So one of the challenges is, you know, how do we address, how do we, re, how do we build or rebuild trust if we don't acknowledge that context? And what we heard today is a lot of discussion about how vital it is to acknowledge that context and how it may differ from community to community. We also heard, I think, in some very thoughtful comments that we're not just talking about building trust, we're talking about the need to build trustworthy organizations and institutions. How do we, um, when Dr. Thomas raised the question of sort of what happens when we show up for the emergency with our vaccines, but when we call it a day and we say the pandemic's pandemic's over, but they're still living with the emergency of the ongoing disparities. And we've heard people talk about that with the Latino communities, with our, our um, American Indian, Native American and indigenous communities. This is an ongoing challenge. So what do we do? We all know you can lose trust quickly. We know that. So we're also seeing some promising collaboration really community organizations and local and state health departments digging in deep 
to work together during this emergency? And then the question is, what do we need to do to help them sustain that? And certainly we've heard a lot of discussion today about the need for community engagement, which requires a workforce that knows how to do effective community engagement, sustained funding that allows us to reach out and build partnerships with community organizations that can be sustained over time, not dependent on short-term grant funding. We also heard a lot about the need for the um, investment in community health workers, but not solely community health workers. Community health workers, new data systems that can be translated, working with community partners into actionable um, steps to address community needs. So our real challenge is trustworthiness. How do we build, sustain the capacity, the partnerships, the workforce to address these issues? So in many ways, this leaves us with, you know, tomorrow, it provides a great foundation for tomorrow, where we're going to turn our attention in a very specific way to issues around communication about pepper science. So we, we started with that today, and then we, we moved heavily into talking about trustworthiness. And tomorrow we will focus on misinformation, disinformation, and we will also focus on, you know, what are strategies for moving forward. So please remember, be ready with notes for our last session tomorrow which is on um, where do we go from here so that we can, uh, we can take on Dr. Shaw's challenge a moment ago. And it was, how do we not just be transactional as we go through this emergency, but how do we become transformative so that we are better able to work with our communities in future emergencies and build trust in our science? So I just have to say, you know, if you've got suggestions or comments, feel free to share it with the Academy staff, make your notes, put on your thinking caps for tomorrow. And I just want to give a thank you for our participants, our panelists, our moderators, and all the crew behind the scene that made today happen. So thank you so much. We will see you at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So thank you.